Well, good afternoon, everybody. I am in Port Townsend, Washington, and we're at Fort Warden State Park. It is an old military installation that uh, served as one of three forts, actually back from the First World War, I believe, as well as the uh, Triangle of Fire that defended the entrance of Puget Sound at Admiralty Inlet. And uh, Fort Warden is the one on this side of the street. There's also Fort Casey and Fort Flagler. This building right across the street is the Coastal Artillery Museum, which has a prominent closed sign on it right at the moment. So we're going to walk east we're going to pick up some good views of the Cascades. I can see Glacier Peak right ahead across Puget Sound, one of the Cascade volcanoes. Although I've been down here quite a few different times, I'm not completely familiar with what all is inside this fort but I do have a program on my phone here that is furnishing my location and the uh, satellite view of the topography around here. So it says activated on December 15th, 1879. The original light was located atop the lightkeeper's house. In 1913, a new tower was constructed and the light was relocated there for better visibility. The U.S. Lighthouse Society is now in the process of restoring the entire light station. Your help is needed. Please visit pointwilsonlighthouse.org. Now we're walking on very loose sand. And as we head out on to the beach here, this is the Strait of Juan de Fuca, the east entrance of the Strait of Juan de Fuca from Admiralty Inlet. Nice panoramic view there of the entire extreme northeast tip of the Quimper Peninsula, an extension of the Olympic Peninsula. <laughs> a dog barking at the seagull. <laughs> Alright, I'm not going to go that way. I'm going to try this. So I think this is closer to where I want to go. We shall see. Caution, hazardous area, trip and fall hazards, low light, sharp objects. 
Sounds exciting, let's go. Oh yeah, this is exactly where I wanted to go. This was the base for a turret of a gun. A rather big one, probably. It stood up probably higher than this. But you've got to watch where you're going here because you could easily kill yourself by falling down here. Oh yeah, and uh, here's the base of another gun right here. Probably a 16 inch gun that had a range of, you know, 20 miles. And some sort of a watch tower command center right here. And this is looking down the Strait of Juan de Fuca towards Port Angeles, straight ahead. And yet another gun was there. So, we'll go around here for a second. I don't want to go down that one. And there again, the gun was down in there. And more beach down there. So let's drop down here. It looks safe with this rail. It's, yeah, that rail is solid. Another level down below. This is interesting. Okay, so this is just a. Uh, but this actually goes someplace, because my guess was that they had to bring shells up from down below. So I'm gonna turn the light on. And look at this in here. Ooh. Somebody's down here because I hear voices. This goes very narrow. All right, so this goes up here. All right, so this is like a maze. Okay, this goes comes back out on the second level. This is outside. And this big grate, I'm not stepping on that. There's a sewer down under there. 
And does this dead end or does it come over here? Oh, goes more. A little bit of groundwater seepage, but not that much. Well, oh, it's pretty deep in there. I don't want it to go down there anymore. I'm not sure what is down there. Oops. Did I mess myself up here? All right. It's very narrow down in here. Okay, avoid that green. This reminds me of the... Uh, playing the video game Wolfenstein I used to do a long time ago. Okay, all right, now we're down below. Probably stored shells in here, maybe? I don't know, it's hard to say. And this is where we first entered the area, just a little bit farther down. That way is where we came down, and uh, there's another stairwell going up. So, what is this? <laughs> but this goes back out here. <laughs> we got another one of the people up on the stairway right there. A bit down here. Da, 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 da. Pipes. Well, this ends, but this is a door. Um, <laughs> one of these big steel doors. Um, Hello. Yeah, this is the big room here that's facing south that way. Another room. Oh, yeah. All right, now we go this way. Another room. This goes back out to where the branches out and comes down the stairs either direction. Is off either way, that's that back corridor we were first came down in. Tic tac toe on the wall. Where does the no tunnel go? Hi. Hi. <laughs> now, these are much tighter than the ones that would be. Yeah, it would, it would be uh, very. Wouldn't want to be carrying anything. And then back outside here, another room. And so what this indicates to me is, see this up here? Uh, hoists for the shells. So they probably kept shells in here and then these hoists go this way because you couldn't lift one of those shells. They'd weigh hundreds of pounds. Somebody had a fire there once. Why? I have no idea. And 
find another one right back in here. I did this 20 years ago or so, but I had a very, very dim light then. And so I'm not going that way because there's debris and water. So I've got a, my bike flashlight with me here. It's 800 lumens, so. Okay, yeah, so there's the nickel tour of the bunkers. Go back up here. So there's a Got an emplacement down there, one here, and another off to the right. That was kind of fun. Probably the same thing there. Two five inch balance pillar mount. Guns inactive during World War II. Installed 1902, shipped to Europe in 1918. Interesting. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, this is much smaller than those big ones in the middle there. So that's the road uh, that we came in along the water. So I'm just looking at my uh, little handy dandy phone here and kind of get a, trying to get an idea of where, okay, I'm out there. And I'm looking at the Cal Topo app, which has a pretty good map on it. And so what I have never done when I've been here to Fort Warden is I've never gone up on the bluff up over here. So I want to go that way and maybe we can get a good view up there. Here again is the bunkers we were just through. Taking our little tour, which was kind of cool. Get you a view of the front end of this bunker facility. So that says Kinsey, built 1909-1910. Battery Kinsey was the last fortification built in the Puget Sound defenses prior to the World War II. It was also the most powerful, mounting two 12-inch cannons on modern versions of the disappearing carriage. Construction began in 1908, some 10 years after the building of the heavy gun batteries on the high ground above the Point Wilson sand spit. Battery Kinsey was intended to solve several weaknesses in the original fortification plan. It added two 12-inch guns to the modest number of four already in the defenses. It was located where it could protect the entire entrance of Admiralty Inlet from shore to shore. Its beachside position allowed it to cover the waterway below the fog that often lay just above the surface of the water. It says here in this picture that to load, aim, and fire, the gun required a crew of 51 men. Each gun in its carriage weighed more than 300 tons, could fire a half-ton armor-piercing projectile almost eight miles. So the trail on the 
map here from the phone says that there is a way up on that hill bluff but you have to go up to the end of that circle and then there it meets it so we'll see nope i think it's right over here yeah that would be it i'll bet it's gotta be Hill, batteries and trails, scenic overlook, evacuation trail, foot traffic only. Yeah, well, this is a tsunami zone down here, so if that siren over there went off, you'd have to skedaddle up this hill, like, right quick. Probably only have maybe 20, 30 minutes to get uphill before this got inundated by water, if there was a big, massive tsunami. So, yeah. We're exploring this trail that I didn't even know was here until like 10 minutes ago. And this would probably be slippery footing coming down. A lot of leaves on top of this gravel. It'd be a good workout if you're a runner it would be and walkers also this right ahead is a pretty good grade going to Appleton Pass or something. Steep. But, the thing about steep hills, you get to the top quick. Straight up. 
Yeah, ready to push this button here. Yeah, we've knocked out about two thirds of that, so it's not much more. That must be down. Well, obviously, but <sighs> lower campground, that's where it came from. JFK building, park offices, that way. <sighs> Doesn't however say what's this way. We'll just keep going. Some sort of sign up ahead, about 20, 35 yards. <sighs> oh, it's a dog, I heard. I could not figure out what that sound was. Dogs ahead too, and dogs behind. Obey speed limits, bicycles. There's no way I'd ride a bike up that thing. Okay, so. Where am I? Well, there are roads up here. I think we'll go this way. To the right. There it is, catching up to me. This is we're on the bluff trail. So I'm gonna go this way. Apparently it leads to the bluff that's visible from down on the beach and that's where we'll get a good view. Oh, that was invigorating. Now we came up from nearly sea level and it looks like that we're up to 224 feet. So that was a, a pretty good gain in elevation, at least a couple of hundred feet.
Okay, so I don't know if you can see it in the distance, but the lighthouse is down there. Let's get this back level again. Oops, it's all right behind me. No bell. Didn't say anything until he was right on top of me. But as you can see, that was a perfect example of why bicycles need to say something. Walkers cannot hear bicycles behind them. And if you think that you're going to go around a, a pedestrian on a bike, you know, I just happened to be walking and I didn't know he was back there. So I was pretty close. I mean, that was one more step and I walked right into him. So buy a bell, please. So I see a fence up ahead, red warning sign on it, which is probably going to warn of imminent death if you go to the other side of the fence. Dangerous bluff, falling hazard, stay back. All right, no problem. Well, that's an old ornate bench there. Probably made out of cement. Loving memory of David and Renee Seppler from the Seppler family and uh, uh, Joe Dressler, Dressler, Dressler. Yeah. Okay, so, um, Cascade Mountains, uh, Mount Baker, and uh, down below, right through there, is the Point Wilson Light we saw earlier. The far side is uh, Keystone. They call it Coopville for the purposes of Coopville is over there. But the Port Townsend Coopville Ferry. They used to call it Port Townsend Keystone, but there really isn't anything at Keystone other than the ferry dock. I would imagine in times past you could walk right out here and look over the bluff, but it doesn't sound like too good of an idea. You never know when those are going to give way. It could be undercut by 10, 20 feet and ready to slough off a giant chunk. So you can see the bluffs all the way around here. Uh, on the far side of the Strait of Juan de Fuca here, the east entrance, and that is uh, Whidbey Island over on the far side. And the San Juan Islands, that way. I don't know if you can see much over that bar there. Okay. I've never been up here. I have no idea what's up here. But it looks like another battery, maybe. Oh, yeah. Now that must have been another five inch emplacement there. And so this is real similar design to the other one. And they go all along here. 
Oh, interesting. So they called this Battery Hill. I'm sorry if I'm blocking your view here and there with my arm, but my nose keeps running and I'm just trying not to sniff too much. I think it's really annoying when I do that. pretty extensive. I had no idea. Another gun was here. Battery Joseph Ash. Oh yeah, here we go. Battery Ash. Innovative battlements. Fort Warden's design was innovative for its day. The gun emplacements and observation posts were detached and dotted along the breadth of the artillery hill, recessed into the landscape and tucked behind thick earthworks. To get a sense of these discrete features, walk down the path toward the tunnel, then descend the steps to the right on the top of Battery Ash into the broad expanse of grass in front of it. From there, you'll have a commanding view of the entrance to Puget Sound that this fort was established to protect. Battery Ash mounted two 12-inch guns, which had a range of approximately 10 miles, firing a 1,070-pound shell. And it's named, Battery Ash, named in honor of Civil War Brevet Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Penrose Ash, who was killed in action at the Battle of Todd's Tavern in Virginia. Okay, so we are already in the front of there. Saw the good view. Now we're kind of traveling, I would say, to the west. Well, GPS has put me out about two, two miles into the street. There we go, now we fixed it. Yeah, I'm heading west, sort of. There's a track up in the ceiling up here, so I'm guessing that that was, again, some sort of conveyor for the shells. Oh!
Okay, I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to get back out of here. So I think, let's see, where does this go? That goes up there to some fortified position. What's this here? Battery Benson. This used to be a very noisy place when the soldiers of the Coast Artillery needed to practice firing at floating targets out in the strait, they primarily used the two large bore guns mounted here. This battery was equipped with disappearing guns. Each gun would lie beneath the outer wall of the battery where it could be serviced and loaded out of sight from the ship in the strait. Then a counterweight would swiftly raise the gun carriage for firing. The recoil would push the gun back down into the battery where it could remain hidden. And it had two 10-inch guns here at Battery Benson. Named in honor of Captain Henry Benson, who served in the Mexican-American Third Seminole and Civil Wars with the 2nd U.S. Artillery. So does this go anywhere? Oh, wow. It does. Oh, oh, oh. There's no way you're going to find around here. This is the way we want to go. Want to head south and go back to the fort. These are interesting. Big pillars. Spotting enemy ships. The concrete columns in this area are all that remain of a building that once housed the telescopes used for spotting enemy ships on the Strait of Juan de Fuca. The building housed three sets of observation and plotting rooms. The layout of the structures was staggered to provide the best view of ships on the strait. On the first floor were plotting rooms and the telescopes were housed on the second floor. It was in the plotting rooms that the readings from the telescopes would be used to calculate the direction and angle to position a gun on the main gun line if an enemy ship was spotted. Underground water reservoir. Below the grassy area behind you and is an abandoned cistern or underground water reservoir. It is 200 feet in diameter and 14 feet deep could hold 2 million gallons of water. It was constructed to store water that could be used to put out fires if the fort ever came under attack. Its roof is supported by pillars. Wow. Far out. And way over there is the other side of the of the, the this gun battery complex here. It's a good 200 yards away. Habitat restoration in progress.
Oh, jeez. Almost turned my ankle there. I did. Ouch. Not that bad. Gotta be careful what you're doing around here. What did I trip on? A cone? Yikes. That was an almost. It didn't turn over. Okay. I think I want to go down this way. Only because it's downhill. And that's eventually where I have to go. But what I want to do is go this way. Oh, wait. What have we got here? There's a sign, which is always a good thing. I don't know what this building is, but it's old. Mortar batteries to the right, main gun line that way, battery way. I want to go this way. Salal brush. Almost six feet high. And it's twelve twenty eight PM. So I've been walking over here for Probably an hour and a quarter. Yeah, this battery is down to 22%, so it's living on short time. kind of reverse directions a bit. More pillars. So this must be a one must have been another telescope position. Building that used to be up above it. Memories Vault. Interesting. So if I had to guess, we're on the east side of all of those guns now. That would be the end of it right there. And now if we go this way, it should take us down into the rest of the fort. I'm just guessing, of course, because I've not been here before. <laughs> Not up here anyway. Okay, it looks like I'm going the right way now according to my little 
map app. Habitat restoration progress. Removing invasive plants, replacing with native plants. More little flags than an orienteering meet. That's where people get together and use map and compass and try to win a competition. Now this kind of angles off real quick on the left downhill through the trees and brush madrone and other trees A lot more gradual way down on this side than it was when we came up from the water on the Point Wilson side. And now I can see off to the left here this way that uh, this is uh, Fort Warden. And yeah, so we're going to go back down there, and the field that we began our tour was right down there. As quiet as it is up here, I'm getting the impression that vehicles aren't allowed up here. Uh -huh. Do we have a stairway we can use? Yes, indeed. Not exactly easy steps, though. Yurts. Temporary type tents, I guess.
straight toward the sun, so we are going south. And it is noon. We'll go to the left here. I was going to say, I saw something walking up ahead and it didn't look like human and it's a deer. to public. How oh, oh, interesting. This building here has seen better days. It looks like it's bowed in the middle. Coast Guard helicopter down to the south in the distance. What a delightful little tour this has been. Seen quite a few things that were very interesting that I hadn't seen before. Glad we got to tour the Fort Warden State Park Complex today. Thanks for coming along once again. Thanks for all the likes, the comments, the subscribing to our videos. And I enjoyed uh, talking to you on this beautiful day in December of 2023. So until next time, friends, hope you come along for the next adventure. Until then, take care and please be well.